so excited. It's the moment I wait for. As soon as I start a sketchbook is the moment when I get to start another sketchbook. <laughs> Let's get this open, opening it for the first time. Mm -hmm. Verbiage describing the sketchbook. I've used quite a few of these sketchbooks now, so kind of know the dealio. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, I like to decorate the outside of the sketchbook as one of the first things that I do. Last time I actually used acrylic paint. It worked really, really well. So that's what I'd like to try this time. I picked out a few colors, a little color scheme to try out. First thing I need to do is kind of sketch out an idea and thumbnail it to make sure that what's going on in my head makes sense on paper. And so my idea was kind of to have someone with a flower crown of some kind. But then I pictured the title of my sketchbook fitting in the hair somehow. And now that I'm trying to actually put this into practicality, I'm getting a little lost. Little blobs symbolize the roses. And then this is where I would write sketch 23. Oh my gosh. I was really happy with the last one I did and all I did was put letters on there and I thought it looked pretty cool but I kind of like to try and draw a character on this one. I was practicing drawing roses the other day and none of these are really gelling with me. Let me try something else. I just had a random visualization. <laughs> so if like there's a head on the bottom half of the paper or the cover, oh, you couldn't even see what was going on. <laughs> All right, so basically I just explained my idea here of a character who's like cut off down here so you can just kind of see the eyes. Then we have the flower crown with the hair coming down. And then we're gonna have the title up at top with like a few random blobular roses kind of filling in some of that white space. I'm thinking I might actually want to include most of the face. So if I like bring this square here more. I kind of like the idea of the hair being kind of blobular like the roses I plan on drawing. Maybe if they like imitate the shapes of the roses. Now I can't decide if I want the flower crown to go around like this or be more like actually on the crown of her head. Ooh, and then I can take these like little flowery things and go all the way around the outside of the sketchbook along the back and then incorporate the design throughout the whole thing. That'd be really fun. Not sure why this is the idea that's coming into my head. I hardly ever draw flowers. <laughs> but I should take inspiration when it strikes. I've learned my lesson. Could move the sketchbook so it's like almost coming out of the head a little bit more. Then it's like overlapping the character design a little bit. Why don't I try and use some of the paints and see where I'd like those to go. Oof, I love that color. First, maybe for hair. We're just trying to experiment with the color scheme, see what looks good where, before we start working on a canvas where erasing is not really a possibility. So when I'm sketching, I really like to be loose and messy because you never know what will show you something that you like better than what you were going with in the first place. So I'm just using like this big brush, blotching it down, trying things. This is actually a nail art brush that I never used for nails, so I'm just repurposing it so that it can get a little love. Try to make sure we're not creating any tangents with the edge of this hair. Make it kind of blobular like the flowers, maybe. I might grab a purple. Let me see if I have a purple paint to add shading in here without being too harsh. I say as I walk away. <laughs> I've got purple pizzazz and royal fuchsia. Mix it with our primary red. Oh, there's enough like hue change though where I think that's making a difference. Add it underneath the crown like it's a shadow. Kinda looks a little bloody and gory there, but it's not. <laughs> Just trying to figure it out if I add my eyebrows back in. And if I use like black for the eyelashes instead of that red, that might help too. It looks a little too sad for my liking. Oh, now she looks like she's coming after you. <laughs> hmm. It'd be nice if I could somehow capture my art style at the same time as using the paints. That would be my goal. I can also, at the last minute, use like a fine point Posca pen and add like line art of some kind. No, eh, that's a little creepy. Eh, no, no. Hmm, I think I liked it better without the blue. But I do like it with like the dark purple. So I'll make sure that I mix that dark blue with the primary red. And then I think we should be good to go for that. I just don't like how much control I have with a brush. I cannot do it. I like splat and splotch. 
No, I think I prefer the 23 being up there. This, I think, for some reason adds to the spookness that I don't like. <laughs> trying this again, seeing if I can get a better result. I'd much rather have some contrast between the skin and the hair, though. <laughs> what if I just use straight coral for the skin? Hmm. It's worth experimenting. It's a little bit more illustrative. I feel like I need to see that with the black backdrop. It definitely pulls away from that creep factor that we had over there. <laughs> Use this Posca and outline some things. I'm gravitating more towards this one's look. I think I like this better. But yeah, I'll think about it while this is drying and then we'll move on to the front cover. All right, so this is dry, I think. While I was waiting for that to dry, I started doodling something else. And then when naturally this was dry, but then this was wet, so then I had to wait even longer. But I think, I think we're good. It looks dry now. <laughs> the idea, I'm, I'm still not like 100% crazy about the idea, but There'll always be more sketchbooks, so I think I, I think I just want to go with this. I'm going to start by sort of drawing out the shapes and hoping for the best. Try and make sure the face is symmetrical. It's kind of my goal here. Okay, I can actually erase this, which is really really handy. All right, this is kind of the idea. Am I happy with the layout? We'll check everything. Ooh, this is fun. I kind of like that one. Let's go with that one. So first we need to start layering some paint. I really like this warm beige as a hair color. So I think I'll start there and try and get as even of a coat as possible. Fill in the shapes. Now this first layer is going to be pretty patchy and I don't have to worry about staying inside the lines when it comes to the other shapes because I will be painting over top of those. But I do want to be careful not to go anywhere that I want it to be black. Could probably add the first layers of the roses as well. They're not gonna look like much in those first blotches, <laughs> but it's still an important step. Sometimes I get a little uh, overwhelmed by how bad things have to look before they can look good. And I think that's a good lesson just in art in general, that you have to start somewhere to be able to get further on down the road. So I'm kind of working on the face now. Kind of trying to focus any gradients on here so that it's not completely that coral color. I love the coral color, but I'm just not ready to commit. <laughs> Adding a little bit more coral to the mixture when I get closer to the hair so that there's that contrast. It's nice that this stuff dries pretty fast. <laughs> My kind of medium. Markers and acrylic. <laughs> this might actually turn out pretty good if I stick with it. Whew, it's not there yet. <laughs> Working on it. I'm wondering if I should just leave that black from the sketchbook for the eyelashes. Kind of digging it. Just try to get some details. I'm still using the big fat brush, so I haven't like moved into detail mode, but I'm trying to like put blotches where I think they make sense. Add a little bit of shading under some of these roses while I have this purple on my paintbrush. It's very lightly because I went a little overboard with the thumbnail when it came to shading. <laughs> Let's um, make this look a little bit more like hair maybe. Add some strands. Oh I'd love to put one like right here when that's dry. Let's switch to this more fine point brush. Grab some of the red. Go right above the eyelashes. Just add a little bit of redness. Kind of mix it with the coral a little. Oh, I didn't do lips. I think I want to make the lips straight red at first, at least. Just fill those in. Same way I'm filling in the roses. One layer at a time. Maybe paint over some of that purpley blue bits. I think it's just, it's not quite the right color. It doesn't fit into the color scheme. I wish I could go back and shrink the scalp area. A little too much volume. If I can like, you know, make it look like a rose. Like these are some petals. I should have used a smaller brush for this. Does it look like a rose? Let me switch to a finer point. Go in with the red. Kind of blend out some of these areas. I think I could use with a little bit more blending. Mix that in with like the red a little bit more. I think I'd like the center to be a little darker. So 
So this time I'm going to grab the coral, draw a bit of a circle. So that's going to be the center and then draw some shapes here. Kind of keep the center a little darker, maybe. Kind of like this. Darken up down here. From a distance, it looks like a flower. And that's all you can really ask for <laughs> at this point, right? I'm actually kind of digging the like abstractness and yet more detailed than any other flower I've ever drawn kind of aspect of it. You guys were so nice to me the last time I was drawing roses, so I've kind of built up a little self-confidence with the way they look. So thanks for that. <laughs> kind of like learning to love it. Oh, I think this one's my favorite so far. I just like the shape of it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And just slowly figuring out what a flower looks like. A rose in particular. Okay, from that knowledge, I kind of want to go back to this one. See if I can improve. So a lot of these like sort of squiggles. <laughs> That's every drawing though, isn't it? That's not that helpful. Hey, mix it in with a little bit more red here. Could I explain how to do what I'm doing right now? No, but it's a start. <laughs> I think it's all about like making these shapes that just slightly interlock. And then you get kind of like a rose. Mm -hmm. This just got me 10 times more excited to finish this. <laughs> yeah, bingo. Just adding some shading to the hair now. Without going too overboard, hopefully. Flowers are my favorite part so far. <laughs> And then, yeah, I think the next step would probably be to let it dry. But I just can't stop touching it. What's wrong with me? Well, all right, it's dry now. I might have played with it a little bit more. I don't remember what it looked like last time we talked. But I want to do next is go over with my Posca pan. Do, 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 do. And add details where I know it needs them. And maybe just incorporate more black because black is our background color here. Not sure how much of this I want to do because I don't really want to go overboard. You can see I kind of went over some of the purple areas with pink just to like fit it into the color scheme a little bit more. So I'm kind of trying to avoid purple. Ooh, this is actually brighter than some of the pinks I've already used. Yeah, maybe more black would help. I don't know. It's looking a little freaky. I don't know what I changed. Something apparently. Cool thing about all these art supplies is that they're opaque so you just paint over everything and if you don't like it you just paint over that. You can use this red which is slightly different than the ones in the roses to add a little bit of extra texture. Now I'm not going over and like outlining every single section of the roses. I'm trying to keep it a little bit subtle. Sleeping Beauty has that funny little like cinnamon roll on her hair. And I did it because it made me think of roses. It was kind of the thing I was thinking about. And like Sleeping Beauty is called Briar Rose. So I wonder if <laughs> like the same thought process went through some like very old Disney character design artist. Whoa, it's like I'm have this small, tiny thread of connection with them. <laughs> I wonder if I can add like a shadow right here. It kind of follows this curve. Or wait, maybe it should have been shadow down here. Wait, 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 wait. Darken up this bottom edge of the bangs and then lighten up the top half of it. The top of the head a little bit more and it's like bending over. It's kind of what I'm looking for. It kind of helps a little. Lighten up here, maybe. I'm changing it up a little bit, but I am trying to trace it too. Because my sketch kind of worked pretty well. Oh, I love that. I kind of just tempted to write sketchbook right there. No, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. All right, there's our first go. First little pass of the letters. Now you can see these are, are definitely blending in, so we're going to need to add a little bit of effects to that. Still not prominent enough, I don't think. I might like to layer it up, like thicken the letters. 
but also part of me, let's see, clean this brush, wants to just use a brush and write some of the letters in the hair color, but the hair also intersects up there, so that might not be a great idea. Hmm, ponder. Okay, it's improving. Definitely gonna need a few more layers for the letters. It's a bit patchy. Boom, signed it. <laughs> Not that I'm done yet. Bit of a white border. Maybe bring that white down into the illustration a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I love white borders so much. It's probably a problem. <laughs> Font definitely tend to turned out a little bit on the messy side. I don't like the way the letters are lined up. I think the roses are like a major part of why I like it too. So that's strange and completely out of the expected. I do want to add some designs to the back and I also need to write on the side there. Sketchbook. My most useful math class was the one where they taught you how to write out numbers in word form. I still use it to this day. <laughs> I really want to just paint another rose on the back here. See if I need some room. This, then I don't have to wait for that to dry. I can start painting on this side. I kind of just want to put a flower like right in the middle maybe. Grab some red paint and then try to paint a flower. See if I can uh, capture what I figured out in the other ones. That looks about right. Do I want a second flower? Maybe a little one? There we go, got a couple roses there. Can build up some of the color. Slowly. Add a little bit of the coral. Where we want it to pop a little more. So add some extra petals here. I think it needs a couple more. Not bad, kind of like that one. I like the way the acrylics blend together. If you get them when they're still dry. I might be getting a hang of this roses thing. See what happens when you put in a little time and effort and practice and maybe a little acrylic magic. Okay, that's pretty cool. So like I added a layer of the coral when the red was still wet. And now that it's all dry, I'm going over with another layer of coral. And it looks like a completely different color because it's not blending in. I'm learning so much. <laughs> And then maybe I'll grab a Posca pen and add some of these flower or these little hearts. Wait for that to dry and then I want to add some black line art to it so that it matches these flowers. And then I might just be done. Ooh, I've been spending so much time on this. I'm not ready to say goodbye. Going a little overboard with the black. So I'm just going over it again with some coral. Kind of black out some of the ones that are not necessary. Like, cause some of them, there's enough contrast between the light coral and that darker red that it's not necessary. I normally, in these videos, also draw on the first page. It's quite dry. But I usually draw also on the first page. So like this guy right here. But I just spent like all day on this. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to like rush something for the next page. So maybe I'll film that and post it separately so I can spend like a whole day's worth of effort on it. But here's what I came up with. I'm really happy with this. That's like the most time I've ever put on an acrylic painting. Yes. I like the texture, I like touching it. You go to the museum and you just want to touch the art and they're like, no, 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 don't even go within 12 inches. But when it's mine, just rub my face on it. <laughs> And then there's the back with the three random roses that are just there for no reason because I really wanted to paint them. I guess that is a reason. And there's the front again, sketchbook 23, as well as the side. And the, like the words kind of like covered my least favorite part about the art, which was the really large scalp. I know what I think. I think I want to make like a huge acrylic painting because that was too much fun. <laughs> I just want to blob and smush, you know? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm excited to start drawing in this sketchbook. Well, I guess I did draw on it. We have these, but I'm excited to fill the blank pages. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.